This is 2 Kings 13 and verse 21. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood upon his feet. Double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down teaching and preaching, pushing this gospel good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I've called this lesson Elisha's Bones. See, everything's been stirred up in the news. A lot of distractions. Just going through this story the other night, last night actually, and looking at a few points reflecting on where we are and how it relates. I was looking into it, seeing a few notes and making a few of my own notes. And the distractions are becoming hot and heavy. Anytime that's happening in the news, it's always a good time to I look around the smoke and mirrors of the, the deceiver, the liar. It's this, this white man, the Edomite in the scriptures. He's playing out his role. And so it's his time now to fight against the conclusion of his kingdom. Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, or high priest, or so a king and mediator intercessor in the heavens so we worship so we're just reflecting on what's happening and where we are regarding the, the prophecy this gospel of reconciliation getting back into the favor it's coming with some bumps and bruises turbulence as i say on these flights when they're going through some rough weather so that's what we coming up again so let's go back to this scripture here second kings 13 verse 20 and 21 and elisha died and they buried him and the bands of the moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year and it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. What a frightening situation that could have been. It had me thinking this, because these, if you look back into the story, it's Israel came under attack by the Moabites, as we always was being attacked by someone. It's for this reason <clears throat> why they all have played their part in being the chief enemies of the Hebrew Israelites. That's who we are. They're calling us bywords. It's part of our punishment for, for disobedience to our power. These bywords include Negroes, and Latinos, and Native Americans, the dispersed of Israel. So this life after death through Yahawashai, this unnamed man, it's not written anywhere. I don't know if it's in any other text who this man was. But just these two verses here, they're so powerful. If this man was in his own grave, then they wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been revived because then he wouldn't have gone into Elisha's grave, so he would have stayed dead. But this is in the Bible for a reason. There's no words written there for nothing. And so Elisha's bones, it revived this man. His dead bones brought this man back to life. So it got us thinking about the, reflecting on Yahawashai's death and his resurrection that brings eternal life to who? To Israel. You see? Just got me just looking through all the 
writings about this and reflecting on just these two verses. What is it? What's it doing in the Bible? It's not just there for, for no reason. Let's get some more scriptures here. That we can find a bit more reflection on this. John 12. Let's start at 23. And how shall I answer them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, very meaning, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. See, this is a parable, you know. Yahweh I only ever spoke in parables when he was out in public. Verse 25, he that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. See, that's what we're after. It's this eternal life. So we're dead to the world. We don't care what this Edomite has to offer. We see people in the news right now, they, they say one thing today, they have to reverse, rewind, apologize, pay out money, say they're sorry, because their hope is in this world. They've signed up. The majority have done all kind of deprivation and degenerate acts to get to the position so they have to defend it they can't speak freely they can't be themselves this what we're speaking about doesn't apply to them because they love this life and they'll do anything not to lose it he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal if any man serve me let him follow me where i am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me, him will my father honor. So these people are dishonorable. They have to bend and bow down because their hope is in this man's kingdom and all of his lies. They have to honor him. Now is my soul troubled. All this is red letter. Yahweh shall I speak and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. See? He's not asking to be saved from the hour. This is his whole purpose. You see? And where do we want to go next? The revival in death is because he lives. We live in this truth. You see? Absent from the body. Where is that? Let's see. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 to 8. 1 Corinthians. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians first. Yes, 2 Corinthians 5, starting at verse 6. <coughs> Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. See, this life is full of turmoil and problems. We're weak. We're down at the bottom. It's a wretched situation to find ourselves in. And when we're absent from this body, this tabernacle, then yes, we, it's Job said, he'd sooner be dead so he can stay in the spirit world and not come to experience life in this wicked, this weak tabernacle. It's full of problems. Turn scripture in. Let's go to it. Philippians, there's just one verse here. Gonna start at 19, Philippians 1 and 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Yahweh Shai Amashiach, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always so now also Hamashiach shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death for to me to live 
for me to live is Hamashiach, and to die is gain. You see? It's a win-win. We want that boldness in our spirit, that courage that Paul is exhorting the Philippians here, the Timothy through in the, the Israelites in Philippi, I should say. Where next? We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15. And let's start at 51. The whole of this chapter here is another excellent chapter as usual. Favorite of mine. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's start at 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, for when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? See, that's what we're talking about. We're just having a, a sideway look at Elisha's bones and this man revived and comparing, contrasting this to Yahawashai and his death and resurrection. That's where we have our hope. The scripture say to die is gain in Philippians. And if we was gonna go to Matthew Matthew twenty seven fifty one and behold the veil of the temple was rent. This is when the Hawashai gave up the ghost. In fact, let's start at fifty. The Hawashai, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, as in two broken apart, the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And what happened when this took place? The graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So there were people that were dead. And they woke up, they got up and came out of the graves after his resurrection, as the resurrection of Yahawashai, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So this is the strangeness of our salvation that the scripture speaks about. And this is the report. Isaiah 53 says, do you, do you believe the report or not? The world is being introduced through this little game they're playing with these so-called celebrities. They're being introduced right now to the strangeness of our salvation and it's driving them crazy. It looks to me like it's backfiring in a major way. It's this dead bones. Let's go to Ezekiel 37. Let's read about the first dozen verses here. Where are we? Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh, Yahweh, power thou knowest. Again he answered to me, unto me, prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. Thus said Yahweh, power unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. What's this speaking of? These dead bones and this valley. You see, this is speaking of the land, it's a low land physically but also it's low in moral values this is america babylon the great it speaks to the people of the most high the children the children of israel being called by those bywords we 
spoke of. I can't believe it. They've been introduced after all the money they've spent. Every resources known to man to have these people kept in the dark. They're waking up. I saw these dry bones here. We're reading about them. Where are we? Verse 4 again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said how upon unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath, the truth, to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay the sinews upon you, and will bring upon bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So as I prophesied, I was commanded. As I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So we had various times where we came together, the southern and northern kingdom. But that wasn't of the most high. The truth was not there. So this is this breath, the breath, the spirit of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh the truth which is coming upon these dry bones. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said Yahweh power, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Cause me to think on when Yahweh Shai gathered up the disciples and was sending them out. He breathed upon them, gave them the power to do the work. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. We didn't know who we were, calling ourselves all these names. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh power, Behold, O my people. It's not the whole world. The Most High has a people. I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land then ye shall know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai will leave it there so I just wanted to bring these together this idea of Elisha's dead bones the power that was in these bones. Remember, he got a double portion from his, was he was the understudy to Elijah. And so Elisha, even in death, his bones, the spirit, was able to put, to revive a dead man who when his dead body touched the bones of Elisha, brought him back to life. And so we're reading this repeated here. It's either you believe the report that is in the book or you don't believe it. See this gospel of reconciliation. Re meaning back, cornice, with and ciliate, get back in the favor. It's stirring up this kingdom that is within. Within who is within us, the hopeful elect of Israel. Let's Look to wrap up here. Let's go to Revelation 11. Just read a few verses here. Verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. What, what great city is that? It's Babylon the Great, the whore America, which is spiritually, it spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Why is that? Well, they're the greatest proponent of this 
alphabet lifestyle, all kind of degeneracy. And Egypt, well, that's synonymous with our bondage, where also our Lord was crucified. They removed the truth and put themselves up as our power, lies and deceit. This white man, this leprosy-looking man, how could the Heavenly Father and his son, all the angels and prophets and everyone look, this is degenerate, recessive genes, why would you look like that? Verse 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. That's where we are right now. There's great fear because we dare to call on our power. We know who we are. These dry bones have woken up. Jacob's trouble is creeping up in us. And this degenerate man who is in rulership and all of his buddies listed in Psalms 83 and actually throughout the scriptures where they've come up against the children of Israel, the apple of the Most High's eye, they're in great fear. They've been spreading their lies and deceit, playing their role as the degenerate one, the wicked in the scriptures, Malachi 1 and 4, the earth been given to this man. And so in his, under his rulership, the whole earth is mourning and groaning, waiting for the adoption of sons. Sons of who? The sons of the Most High God, Yasharala. He, Prince of the Power, the children of Israel. That's what the world is waiting for. And so we just want this man to just hurry up and do your under-the-skin technology. Push it, do it. And when you make your move, the Most High will make his move. So we won't stretch the lesson beyond where it needs to be. We're listening to Elisha's bones. Shalom until the next one.